tried to build something together. A new world, an open frontier without prescribed storyline, characters, or destination. It would become whatever residents chose to make of it. If you could imagine it, you could create it. I came to do research about a place that was once the next big thing, and to see what was left. Utopias exist in the same way North and South exist. We never reach the points of the compass, and so no doubt we shall ever live in Utopia. But without the magnetic needle, we should never be able to travel intelligently at all. They say that every single thing you see here, somebody created. The year is 2015, 12 years since the first residents arrived. These days may be its last days, so I'm keeping this log of my expedition. Entry one. In order to arrive, I must first choose a body. Man, woman, beast, or vampire. There are no suitable options. But here I am, embodied. I'm resident number 41,603,745. I'm surprised to see that I'm not alone. I join the other newcomers where you first come to get acquainted with yourself and the laws of nature a stranger out of nothing but goodwill offers to show me things to do. She says she teaches sailing lessons on Friday and although it was a Tuesday, she decided to take me anyway. How could she know that was the one thing I dream about? I learn to launch the boat into the water, let out the sails. I cue the wind's direction. She jumps on board, her friend also. We pick up speed. I'm sailing. Next thing you know, it's morning. My legs are numb, but I'm smiling. A boat is a floating piece of space, a place without a place that exists by itself, yet at the same time given over to the infinity of the sea. I've saved this passage from a book. Entry two. This morning I'm meeting Rebecca Nesson. She was one of the early pioneers, creating one of the first virtual classrooms. She's trying to teleport me to her island. I think we're connected. So this is um this is Berkman Island at Harvard Law School. She sees me now. She looks like a normal person and, and suddenly I'm embarrassed by my form. I'm nothing but a template. I mean to me that's like the most jarring part of the beginning how limited the set of ideas are of what you might want to look like and how hard it is to turn into somebody who you feel comfortable being. It also affects my ability to talk to just whoever I meet because I get this weird impression that, you know, that looks like some kind of inflatable sex toy. The outset of it just feels very strange. You can 
walk around a little okay, bit. Yeah. Um, there was something of real value in this. I still think it's the experience of place. I've fallen behind. Oh, there you are. Are you with me? This is, was a replica of a really famous bridge over the Charles River. I remember this bridge. When was the last time you think you were here? I'm not really sure. But I mean, years ago. Maybe five years ago. There's almost always somebody on this island. Are you, are you with me? Um, sort of. Yeah. Oh, I just felt down. <laughs> I didn't know that could happen. <laughs> what did you think would happen? <laughs> I don't know. I guess there's gravity. So over in this corner, you can usually find somebody, and that's because it's a special kind of a place called a sandbox, where there's open permissions to build um, and put things down and create things. Now we're headed to the site where there used to be this beautiful building. She says it was amazing, like a work of art. Every detail was painstakingly replicated down to the art on the walls, and she just doesn't think that it would be possible to rebuild it. And the thing is, there's just no explanation of how this all happened. Just a note card that reads, there was an error and the sim was attacked. attacked. Done rebuilding date is unknown. I asked Rebecca if Harvard is still paying to keep this land. I suspect so. Um, I don't really know. how much, whether, you know, what, how land has been devalued. Yeah, it, it, it's, it turns out to feel important to me that this is still here. Entry three. I assume a new form, but it's still me. I loved how effortlessly I could travel the world. I visited Berlin, Moscow, Dublin. Ow. But they were nothing more than shopping centers. This is Dublin. When I told Rebecca later, she said, well, maybe that's not much different from the world you know. Maybe she's right. This island calls itself Detroit Rock City. When I arrive, I appear to be just ahead. My body trapped somewhere beneath these floorboards. What is this place? I expected Detroit to have more soul. Hard to imagine anyone ever lived here, in these little boxes. Why do I feel I'm suddenly trapped in a world of replicas? This felt better. What use are fences when we can fly? Or doors? Why be human when you could be a horse? But how can I judge? I'm guilty of the same limits of imagination. I've been collecting stories of people who've left. One says that although he abandoned his house years ago, the whole thing remains exactly as it was, fully furnished. Even his mailbox is still there, he says as if this surprises him most, even his mailbox. Another felt things here just became too much like life in America. Everything owned by a few, only leftovers for the rest of us, she said.
Entry 4 Writing helps me organize my thoughts. In order to create, one first needs to own land. And mostly they're creating houses, clothing, and appearances. It seems to be where most of the money is to be made. But what I can't understand is why so many people would devote all their free time here to such pursuits. And from what I can tell thus far, it is possible to exist here without either. And then one might be able to experience time. Money seems to only buy you more land and more money. I'd seen enough. I ran to the ends of the earth and tried to jump off. Neither life nor death were possible here, in this in-between world. Someone, something, first created this universe. This universe created by a singular imagination, no doubt shaped the society that followed. Entry 5. Marco joins me from Italy. Could not teleport, unable to find teleport destination. He was once an in-world photographer who called himself Marco Manre. Temporary unavailable or no longer exists. Marco agreed to show me the places he used to spend time in, the more creative spaces. Uh, uh, but the last time he was here was over five years ago. There is nothing here. Let's go here. Okay, I teleport you here. I am in front of the gallery. Hello. Hi. Follow me. I hear a click and ask Marco if he just took my photograph. Yes, he admits, and without a camera. One of the most important gallery during the golden age, 2007, 2006, 2008. Wow. You have the original catalog of the exhibit there. Prima Berlin is mine. Where is that? Exactly under your seat. You're exactly <laughs> on, on my flyer. Uh. I don't know what is happening now. If we are looking at a kind of ruin, a kind of uh, museum. Ruins that don't decay. Marco tells me that's the strangest thing of all. Do you see the sculpture in the sky? Yeah. Earlier today, Marco ran into an old friend. She helps run this gallery. An investor once paid the gallery's rent, but for many years now, the artists pay it themselves. $300 each month. She said it's symbolic meeting you here on these last days. Last, last days. days, he repeats. I linger longer, in hopes of holding time, if even for an instant, and I ask Marco if he'd show me some of his photographs. Could you show me some of your photos? Yes. Uh, this is one of the first pictures. Wow. We have a land, we have a, a new space. What do we do? Traces of natural elements in a place completely synthetic. Lost paradise, Rousseau. This is me, like a zebra, just to try <laughs> out of a zebra field. <laughs> it's a very exotic place, self-portrait. Today we call it selfie. Yes. This is an homage to Ansel Adams, Rising Moon. Wow. I was inspired by this idea of the Wild West of our time. Look at this sea. I exhibited this one in Paris, printed, uh, and people doesn't find nothing interesting in it. <laughs> then, when they understood it, it's synthetic, it's incredible. This is the American Apparel, mm -hmm. Reuters, Wired, mm. IBM, inside IBM uh, 
for sale at the beginning. Now we have the same picture at the end. Mm. All those companies are gone now. Most left after the crisis. The time that most people left, including Marco. You are discovering something that is our past. Your new is my past. They say that it's only after the storm that we dare to look for rainbows. The more time I spend here, the harder it is to distinguish one world from another. Marco asked me if this is the first time I've experienced mixed realities. Always such a strong experience, he says, that first time. I met an old friend and we talk about her experience building a new world from the ground up. A conversation we started at home. She appeared just as I had once, but I almost didn't notice because I was so focused on her words. It just was my life, and that's true of so many other people. It had to happen, and I was trying to make it happen. And my entire life was like given over to this project, um, to the point of obsession, really, um, to the exclusion of like anything else. We talk about her experience building a new world. How can we build utopia when we can't even define it? We often said, you know, that this is just practice. Um, this is a verb, not a noun. Um, you know, what we're doing um, is more important. Was I still dreaming? I could have sworn Marissa and I were having this conversation back home. I mean, Look, like, n none of us thought that uh, we would be able to last more than a few days, you know, or that people would come, but they came and inspired hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, all across the globe. So, yeah, I think it's, it's possible. I've, I've seen it happen. It's not abstract. It was an incredible experiment, she said, and it could be the beginning of something even. They came, and they tried to build something. My last entry, 